Okay, greetings to you all. Welcome once again to my channel. And there is DR Flamingo. We are going to look at our, the last aspect of our variation, partial variation. You remember from the very beginning of the video, variation video, we said we had four aspects. That's direct, inverse, joint, and partial. So welcome to partial variation. Before we begin, remind us, don't forget to subscribe, share, like, drop comments, and turn on the post notification button. That is a small bell you see. Thank you very much. Now, you are once again welcome to partial variation. In partial variation, we have two constants here. The new constant called the K1, and maybe the old constant that we know already called the K. Good. Now, let's see some examples and the partial variation. There is one of them. If x is partly a constant, can you imagine? And partly varies directly as y. So x itself is a constant. And x being a constant, partly varies directly as y. Now, once you are varying, you are varying, there is also another constant there. So once again, <clears throat> if x is partly a constant, so x has a constant and partly varies. In fact, once you are varying, there is another constant there. That gives it two constants. So let's quantify them. If x is partly a constant, x in mathematics, that's equal to, right? It's partly a constant. So that is it. And that is plus. Partly varies directly as y. How can you vary as y when there is no constant? That's not possible. So once you are varying another quantity, there is a constant there. So these are the two constants to be determined. In fact, some books or some teachers will use K2. Good. So they'll tell you K1 is a new constant. And this K2 is the old constant of proportionality that you know. I don't want to do that. I want to still maintain the same K. Right? So that there will not be any conflict of interest. So K1 is the constant. That is a new constant we have here. And K is the constant of proportionality or what we call the variation constant. Constant of proportionality. Good. So partial variation questions will end up in simultaneous equation. Take note. Good. Because we have to determine K1 and K. Good. Now let's go to the second example. It means you can have questions on all these four aspects. So look at the second example. If x is partly a constant and partly varies inversely as y. So let's see. x is partly a constant. That's a new constant K1. And that is plus partly varies inversely as y. As usual. Inverse that y goes down. But we label the equation as usual. The third example or the third aspect of the questions that you can see on partial. If x is partly a constant, it's partly a constant like this, and varies jointly. Look at it again. It varies jointly as y and z. So here, one may rationalize and say, oh, there is joint variation. But please take note. In joint variation, did we really see something like jointly? We rather saw vary directly and inversely at the same time. We never came uh, across the word jointly. So please, it's not the joint variation that you know of. So it is rather telling you that combination of what? Y and Z. Take note. This is not joint variation. In fact, in joint variation, we never heard of jointly. It was rather X varies directly as and inversely, not jointly. Good. Now, the final one. The fourth one, if x varies partly as y and inversely as the square of z. So this way, x varies partly as y, or something here, and inversely as the square of z. I'm going to explain this. Inversely as the square of z. Good. If x varies partly as y, you see, 
is different from if x is partly a constant. That's x itself is a constant. Now watch. This same x is a constant and varying partly as y at the same time. So look at it again. If x varies partly as y, so it's a constant, but it is a constant with y at the same time, varying with y. That is why you have this. So take note of the four aspects of the partial variation question that you can see. You can get questions from any of the parts. Whether it is this kind or that or that or number, whatever. Same thing, right? So let's look at one question on partial variation. So there is a question you want to look at on partial variation. It is a sample where question 93 repeated in 97, question 8B. Okay, let's go. The cost C of producing a motor car in a certain factory is partly a constant. So it's a key where that's where I underlined it. And partly varies inversely as the number N of cars produced per day. The cost of producing four cars per day is $1,600. And that's of producing five cars per day is $1,420. I find a relation, that is equation, between C and N. I, I, find the number of cars produced per day necessary to bring the cost down to $1,150 per day. Okay, so let's look at the solution over there. Okay, the cost C of producing a motor car in a certain factory is partly a constant. So C is partly a constant as usual. And partly varies inversely as the number of cars n. Good. So this one looks like one of the examples, the four examples that we saw in partial variation. Good. So that is the mathematical representation of what we have here. Now we have to look for this k1 and k. This k1 is a new constant called a constant. And this k happens to be the variation constant, or what you call the constant of what? Proportionality. Good. So let's go. The cost of producing four cars per day is $1,600, right? So it means when the cost is $1,600, the number of cars is four. Because they said the cost of producing four. That is it. So let's chip in this into equation what? Star. Okay. So from the equation star, you make reference. Cost thousand six hundred K one plus K over what four. Now what you have here is linear equation. You have to multiply it through by what four. So that is what you see here. Good. So what is thousand six hundred by four? When you have thousand six hundred by four, what do you get? And take note, when you are multiplying through, make sure you multiply through by all, right? Attack each term. Attack each of the term, right? Okay. So, 1,000 by 4 will give you 6,400. And that is 4K1. And that is K. Good. So, there's nothing I can do. I just call this equation what? 1. Please, the same simultaneous equation, you know. Just that sometimes... This right hand side happens to be here or on the left, and this one goes to the right, it's the same thing, right? Equal to can be the opposite way, but that's why it is equal to. But if you see it as inequality, then the left is on the right. But if